good day everyone once again i want to comment my youtube channel my name is guido academy in this particular video i'll be explaining hybridization hybridization before i can dive into this hybridization so well i want to show you something carbon atom has the electronic configuration of 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 now the electronic configuration of Carbon here, this is a ground state electronic configuration of carbon. A ground state electronic configuration of carbon, which can also be drawn as you have something like this. You have another thing like this again. Why this? You have a degenerate orbital. You have something like this the PS and the PY. Now, listen. When. First of all, let me go back to this hybridization for you to have a clear understanding on this. Hybridization is the intermixing or the blending of atomic orbitals to form a new hybrid orbital. So, you have to blend atomic orbital and then at the end of the whole process again, you form a new hybrid orbital. But let me continue with this first before I move straight to this hybridization. What will happen here is that if this electron here, remember you have two electrons here, two S, if one of these electrons has gained enough energy, and it moves from this particular point to a higher energy level you are going to have an excited state of carbon so this is what we have here is a ground state so what i mean is that if you have something like this if you have something here is already two so energy level before hybridization can take place the energy level must be similar i mean they must be equal or see let me use the word they must be similar so one and two is not equal they are not similar two and two is equal so that's to say hybridization can easily occur here so what will happen is that if one of the electrons here moves remember this is what we have here the same thing here so if one of these electrons which is this particular electron decides to move from this orbiter to this orbiter here so we call this the excited state of carbon so this is actually the excited state of carbon this is a ground state why this is what the excited state of carbon now look at this again when one of these electrons blends with one of these electrons it's going to give us sp which is s1 p1 this is an s orbital this is p orbital when one of these electrons blend with two of these electrons it will give us sp2 when one blend with this it's going to give us what sp3 so these are the primary hybridization we did in uh, our ssc our ssc which is a, a senior secondary school talking about organic chemistry and the rest so but please take notes hybridization talks about um the missing the term missing or the blend of atomic orbital to or more atomic orbital to form a hybrid what orbital please the orbital that you are blending they should have equal energy level the new orbital that is formed which is these are the orbitals that are blending 2s1 let me write it 2s1 is blending with a uh, 2p3 so these are the orbitals that are blending now at the end of the whole thing these three orbitals they are formed from the blending of these two orbitals so it can be sp, it can be sp2, it can be sp3. So the new orbital that is formed from this reaction is called the hybrid, the hybrid what? Orbital. And they have this, they, they have this similarity in terms of shape, in terms of size, and in terms of what? Of energy level. So the new orbital that is formed, compared to the initial orbital, which is the one that is blending, they have the same shape, similar shape, similar size, and similar energy what energy level. So that's just the general overview of what of what hybridization looks like. And please take note: in terms of this hybridization, generally we have a lot of type of a lot of a lot of them. So it can be sp, sp two, can be sp three, it can be sp three d, can be sp three d2 it can be sp3 d3 it can be sp2 d it can be sp2 d2 so we have a lot of blend orbital and it can even be dsp3 now listen there's difference no between dsp3 and sp3 d so for those of us who are doing uh, maybe advanced chemistry already for one day level you don't need all these ones you just go straight here so for you for those of us that are doing advanced chemistry already, you realize that these two things are different. This one is talking about C. This D orbital is inside before the S. It's talking about an inner complex. Why? Since this one is outside, it's called an outer, an outer what, complex. So we have a lot of orbital that will be formed. But for this very video, I'll be working with these six orbitals. 
which is SP, SP2, SP3, SP3D, SP3D2, and SP3D3. This is a table showing hybridization, the bond angle, the expected geometry. We have expected geometry and we have the actual geometry. Then we have uh, the molecule. Now, let me explain something here again. When one electron of the S orbital blend one, one electron of the P orbital, 1S, 1P, the answer is what? SP hybridized. Remember, the hybrid orbital is called, is the new orbital. The new orbital is called the hybrid orbital. So if you have one electron of the S orbital blend with two electrons of the P orbital, it's going to give us what? SP2. 1S, 3P is going to give us what? SP3. 1S, 3 electrons of the P orbital and one electron of the D orbital, SP3D. 1s 3p 2d is sp3 d2 1s 3p 3d is what sp3 d3 so that's just everything about the hybridization so if a question should come in this format when one electron of the s orbital blend with three electron of the p orbital with two electron of the d orbital is going to form dash hybrid orbital the answer is what sp3 d2 so that's as simple as that now the bond angle here is 180 here is 120, here is 109.5, here is 3 of the bond, 3 of the bond will be 120, why this one is what? is 19. For this very one and this very one here, it's kind of complex, so that's why I skipped that. Then, for the geometric expected, SP3 is linear. This very one here is trigonal planar. This very one here, now this linear molecule, is, it can be in this format. Uh, triple bond hydrogen and here is hydrogen. That's that's a linear molecule. So for trigonal planar, that's where you see your ammonia and the rest. And the bond angle there is what is 120. Why this one you have 109.5 that is tetrahedra? That's where you see your methane there. Please, with this you can easily detect how the compound will look like. So there will be something carbon and there will be what H4. As simple as that. So like this 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 very one now. This is C2. H2, as simple as that, which is the same thing as CH. For this very one now, it can be N here, how many hydrogen? H3. So if you see something like this, your mind should go to this place. And if it is S3, your mind should go to what? SP2 hybridized. So for this very one here, the shape is what? Trigonal by parameter. For this very one here, the shape is what? Octahedra. And this very one here, the shape is pentagonal by parameter. So please take note of this molecule. If you see any molecule that looks like this, Easily trace it back to the hybridization or the hybrid what orbital. So just observe closely. If you have any question regarding this particular table, feel free to answer. I believe that the table alone is self-explanatory, but feel free to answer any question regarding this. If they give you an example like this, let's say uh, PCL5 is dash hybridized, or PCL5 belong to dash hybrid orbital. In the examination question, uh, 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 so, uh, let's say your exam question, PCF I belong to dash hybrid orbital. Now, what you are expected to do, half open bracket, number of valence electron of the center atom plus number of monovalent atom attached plus negative charge minus what? Positive charge. That's it. Now, listen, look at this very well. Seeing something like this, the first thing that should come to your mind is which of them is the monovalent atom? Sorry, which of them is the center atom? And which of them is the attached? The easiest way to detect this is that the number of the the the, 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 the element that contain the least number of atom. For example, now phosphorus it has one carbon atom, one phosphorus atom. While chlorine it has five atom. Hydrogen it has two. Oxygen it has one. Sulfur it has um, uh, one. Fluorine it has six. So the one that has the lowest will be the what the center atom. So if you look at this now, which of them will be the center atom? Nitrogen, because nitrogen is what? One. If you look at this now, which of them will be the center? Oxygen, because oxygen is what? One. What about this one now? Bromine, because bromine is what? One. Why fluorine is what? Is, um, um, what is it called? It's five. But before I start with this whole stuff, I want us to write the periodic table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and zero. Here is my hydrogen. Here's my helium, we have lithium, we have beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, 
magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and what? And calcium. Now, there's something you call valence electron. I am just trying to explain this valence electron here. Valence electron simply means the number of electrons in the atmosphere. I would have explained deeper, but because of this particular video, I don't want to explain the whole of valence electron in hybridization so it looks somehow so what will happen is that for you to easily determine the number of valence electron in a particular element is very very simple just have something like this so magnesium here is in group 2 has two valence electron aluminium is in group 3 has three valence electron phosphorus is in group 5 has five valence electron osine is in group 6 has six. so as easy as that so if you look at the element if i call a particular element first of all picture that element to your mind what group does it, does it belong to in the periodic table? If it belongs to group 1, then it has 1 valence electron. If it, long, if it belongs to group 1 million, it has 1 million valence what? electron. So that's for that. Now look up here. The formula for calculating it is half. Let's start with the first one again. The first one, let's say PCL5 is equal to half number of valence electron of the center atom. And we already agreed that Phosphorus here is the center atom because phosphorus has the lowest number of what of atoms, so it's the center element because it has the num less number of at uh, atom. So phosphorus, let's trace here. Phosphorus belongs to group five, so here will be five. Plus number of monovalent atom attached. How many chlorine is attached? Is five, so you have five here. Plus any negative charge here, no. Any positive charge here, no. Then you have a uh, five plus five. You give us what? Half, then 10. So this divided by this, at the end of the year, we are going to have what? 5. So please take note. We have, uh, let me draw the orbitals again. We have sp, we have sp2, we have sp3, we have sp3d, we have uh, sp3d2, we have sp3d3. If the answer is 2, this one has 2 equal orbitals. 3 equals orbital, which 3 orbitals are from? Four orbitals, five orbitals, one, three. It's very, very easy. What you should do is that if you have sp three d, here is one, here is one. One plus three plus one will give us what? Uh, five. So since our answer is five, then this whole concept here is sp three d what? Hybridize. As simple as that. So let's try this H two O water. If you have H two O, what is the center atom now? The center atom, hydrogen is 2, oxygen is 1. So oxygen will be the center atom. So if you trace oxygen here, oxygen is what? It's 6. So you write 6 plus how many hydrogen is attached to it? 2 plus is it positive? Is it negatively charged? No. Is it positively charged? No. So from there you have half 6 plus 2 will give us what? 8. And then that thing again, no. Which is going to give us 8 divided by 2. That will give us uh, 4. If this for less count, sp3 is correct because sp3 is what is for. So you have sp3 as our answer. So water is sp3 hybridized. Now let me show you another one again. For example, if you have CH4, we already know that CH4 is sp3 hybridized. CH4 is sp3 hybridized. Carbon here has four valence electrons. So you have half four. Plus, which is that thing again? Hydrogen has four. Yes. Plus zero. Any negative charge? No. Minus what? Zero. Then at the end of the OT, four plus one will give us eight. So you have half times what? Times eight. Which is equal to eight all over two. Which is equal to what? Four. And since that's what? SP3 what? Habidize. So these are some of the things you do. Let me, let me, I believe I can clean this already. You can pause the video if you have not written that so I can write that immediately. Yes, back to SFCs. If you have SFCs, SFCs is equal to the first thing that should come to your mind, which of them is the center is S. So if S is the center, then sulfur is in group what? Cis. So cis plus how many fluid do you have there? Cis. Is it positively charged? Negatively charged? No. Positively charged? No. So we have equals to half. Cis plus cis will give us times 12 which is equivalent to 12 divided by 2 which is 6 so which of them is 6 here here is 2 3 4 5 6 so our answer will be sp3 
D2 hybridized. So this compound here is SP3 D2 hybridized. Now I will skip this very one here. I will go to this very one. So H3O plus. So if you have H3O plus is equal to half, which of them is the center? Oxygen. And oxygen is what? Oxygen is 6. Plus hydrogen here is 3. Plus, is it negatively charged? No. Is it positively charged? Yes. How many charges does it have? One. Now, for those of us who are confused, why is it one? If you have calcium 2 plus, it means it has two charge. If it has calcium plus, it means it has sodium plus, rather, it means it has one charge, one positive charge. If you have chlorine minus, it means chlorine is negatively charged and it just has one. And if you have oxygen 2 minus, it's what? Three charge. Two charge, rather. Three plus three electrons that is given out. Two minus two electrons that is accepting. So if you have something like this, it's plus already. And on the formula, if it is positive, you use minus. And if it is negative, you use what? Plus. So from what I have here, I'm going to have half. 6 plus 3 <coughs> will give us 9 minus 1 will give us what? 8. So at the end of the whole thing, 8 times 1 will give us 8 divided by 2 will give us what? 4. That's also what? SP3. So I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. So I want everybody to do this one for me and do this very one for me. And tell me what hybridized orbital it belongs to. So the question is, ammonia belongs to dash hybrid orbital, why uh, 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 BRFI belongs to what hybrid what orbital? Please take note, bromine here is in group 5 in the periodic table, bromine is in group 5 in the periodic table, and boron here is also in group 5 in the periodic table. So try this and tell us your answer. I believe that if you have any question regarding this whole concept, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. I'm going to attend to that immediately if you have any question at all. Remember, the essence of this particular video, this whole concept here, is to simplify chemistry with Guido Academy. Please, don't let my thoughts be wasted. I want everyone here, everyone here, listen to the, my voice now to have at least 70A in your exam. 70 in your exam. This can actually be possible if you pay attention to all my videos, watch my videos from the beginning to the end. I'm not saying for all your courses, but I'm saying 70, at least 70 in your CHM 101, I mean your chemistry exam. It is very, very possible, very, very possible. I've done that before and I believe that you can do that as well. If you have any questions regarding this, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. And most of you, you have this habit of watching my videos without sharing. Please share it to your department. They're not the carry first class. <laughs> Sorry, they're not the carry first for university. It's not possible. Everybody will deal with what we call CGP. So everybody can make it. Everybody can add A's. So the best I want from you, or what I want from you now, is for you to share this particular video to others. Share it to your classmates. If you want anyone to have this 70 A in your department, at least 70 in chemistry, please share this my video to them. Hope to see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye. Remember, <laughs> chemistry simplified with Guido Academy.